expect that of it. How are you doing? Very well. How Good. are you? Well, that's some grumble. Never get me anywhere, would it? It wouldn't, indeed. No, not indeed. While I'm in this very opportunistic position, would you like something to drink? Um, I'll have a Lucozaid, please. A Lucozaid? Yes, please. AIDS recovery. So I'm told. Oh. On Lucozaid. Thank you kindly. And I think I'll be having one of these strange-shaped fellows. Uh, God knows what it is. But it's the shape, the shape is all I'm interested in. Yes, yes. Aesthetics. It's imported from Germany, and I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure you can tell. We're in the Hacienda, as I said. A building in which you personally have invested some Hel money. Helped to build, not well, personally, no, no. Yeah. This, this combo that's something involved with, uh, called New Order, uh, sort of involved in some way, yes. And my God, what a slog it's been. It's we've been here a few years now, and I'm glad to say it's... Has it had, it's had its downsides, has it's it? It's had its downsides, and now we're having a bit of an upside, yes. Yeah. And well, was there ever a time when it looked like it may not be a viable proposition? Um, I think that's the word go, yeah. Uh, I think ourselves and the factory made the mistake of thinking that all you did was you used to buy a building, tie it up a bit, <laughs> put a bit of a stereo in there. Yeah, that's, that's all you need, really, isn't it? That's what we thought. And uh, of course, life's not like that, really. It was only when we got uh, a guy called Paul Mason, who sort of run a club before, in to sort it out for us. Oh my God, what a mess you! Yes, with what the have you been doing? Yeah. And uh, he's managed to sort of turn it around a bit. It's yeah. Been fine. Yeah. Did you have any notion at the time of what a sort of internationally famous place it might become? No. No. None whatsoever. No, I never. I never. I never. A club in Manchester. They come in sort of renowned throughout the whole of Europe. No, no, that's not going to happen. If you'd yeah. asked me that a few years, I would have said no, that's not going to happen. But uh, it has done. Yes, it's become. Uh, it's got a lot. I think he's got an award off some, some Lord, Lord, Lord Litchfield, is it? Give it an yeah. award for being a good place to come for a, for a drink. I've never seen him in here. For a pint of champagne? Well, well, well probably, probably. And it has a straight glass. Probably. We're going to have a look at uh, one of your earlier reincarnations. Yes. Joy Division. Joy Division, I remember. Yeah. Long time ago now. A long time ago. And atmosphere. Let's have a look. Why not? Hello there, that's Joy Division. A video you had a hand in making? Uh, a bit of a hand, yeah. I was the third elf from the left, the one with the <laughs> very pointed hat on. Uh, no, that was Anton Corbin, actually, yeah. who did that one. It's a sort of retrospective one. A talented person, a talented person. But um, I do remember reading that you, you, or at least some of the band, were saying that you didn't really have much to do with the videos, and then in fact, part of the sort of mystery of it was that you just let someone do what they fancied. Yeah, that's exactly what I've, I've always thought. In fact, what I've always, I've always wanted to do was uh, just get someone to do a, either get someone to do a film and we'll do the music for it. Yeah, you know, it's a little film, or we'll do the music and get someone to do it. But it's better the other way around because that's what videos are, isn't it? Really. And in fact, we were going to do it with the uh, a gentleman called Michael Powell, who did. He's done a few films. He's done the Red Shoes and all that. Uh, we were going to do it this year. But um, unfortunately, he's no longer with us, so that one's. Off oh, did he kit. die? Yeah. He did, yeah, he, he did. That's right, he's very old, wasn't he? He, he was incredibly did, old, yeah. He did that Colonel Blink, didn't he? he did that? Colonel Blink, yeah, yeah. He did that and uh, a few other things. But I was quite interested in him because that was the way, the way he worked on sort of the red shoes, was that he, he had the music, and Black Narcissus as well. He had the music and everybody had to act to the music. Yeah. Which I, I think is pretty good. He ended up being sort of slightly different angle than they were. Well, this song was called Atmosphere, yes. That and, was um, called Atmosphere, yes. And does that, have you always felt that, yeah, as, a, as an important aspect of New Order's music? That mm. filmic, yeah, filmic, a atmospheric, I mean... Personally, yeah, I do. I do, I do like a, a good bit yeah. of film music. I've, I've done a bit of film music as well, come to that. Um, yeah, I mean, have you not been inundated with offers? You said that, that one particular project fell through. Yeah, uh, yes, you do, but... It's, fine, it's sort of finding the right one, really. It's yeah. sort of interesting. And I always think it's, if someone gives you a script, if you can be bothered reading it, uh, you need to get halfway through and throw them on side, really. You've got to be very persistent about it. And when you joined Do Joy Division, did you have any aspirations beyond, I mean, at that point, were there any grandiose notions of what was possible? There never were. There never no. were. No. Uh, I think the, the problem with Joy Division is a lot of this sort of myth business has sort of come from outside because we were sort of appeared fairly quiet and Ian appeared sort of like some 
some would swallow the dictionary or something like that. Isn't it? Nothing could be further from the truth, really. Actually, they just sort of. But that's the people knew what we were like. Good, good grief. Yes, the, the but that's the thing, eh, that history, yeah, right, and in re retrospect, things obviously, yeah, they take on more... They take on a lot more meaning, yeah. there's a lot more hidden meanings yeah. for people to find in, uh, you know, looking back at your work. You know, what, what is this song about, exactly? Yeah. You know, I just say it's about, I don't know, you tell yeah. me. I'm drumming, drum, guitars, Drumming and guitars, that was basically it, yeah. And words. Yeah, he just sings, he, you know, come on, ask him. We're going to have another look at another Joy Division track and one that took on more meaning than any of them. More meaning, yes. Love will tear us apart. That's the one. Hello, Stags here at the upstairs bar at the Hacienda. I'm here with Stephen from New Order. Stephen, yeah, we saw you just a moment ago. Yes, you did. A very youthful incarnation. A very that's, youthful. Yeah, I got my hair cut since then. Beatles it was really getting, styled. Well, it was all the rage back then, yeah, looking like the Beatles. Yeah. But also the noticeable difference was that you were behind a set of round things. Drums, drums we called. Yes, I remember them, yeah. Yes. It used to be called. Um, but since then, you, I mean, you've moved to uh, diversify as the, as, as the old band um, into areas other than live instruments. And you do a lot of the programming of the computers and all that. Yeah. But is that something you miss, sitting behind uh, noise making? Sitting behind a set of drums and whacking them. Um, yes, well, what you do is you do a lot of programming get incredibly wound up with it all, and then you've got this drum kit in the corner, you know, in a sort of soundproof booth, and you can go over and vent your frustration on it, and I find it's very good for that. Um, not only that, it's quite a good way of coming up with drum riffs as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit of both. Usually what I do is I have this sort of thing where you can hit them and program the thing at the same time, so. Best of both worlds. When, um, when you, you transformed into New Order, mm -hmm. um, Historically, I remember saying how, you know, in retrospect, things take on more importance than maybe at the time, but probably the most truthful uh, historical myth is that you were the first band to kind of become uh, seriously something that people could dance to. Yeah, that's right. And now it's kind of lost in the wash a bit, but... It, it, it is, it is. Um, it's not something that irks you, though, or you're... Um, nah, nah. nah up about things like that. Um, no, it was in a way when we first, when we first started New, New Order we were sort of um, wandering about in the darkness really. It was like start being in your first band again because we thought, well, we, we don't, we're not Joy Division anymore. You know, well, what are we? And it sort of took sort of the first album to sort of find our feet and uh, part of that was sort of getting more involved with technology than little drum machines. Partly because it, would, it just became available, but it wasn't sort of like a mad infa you know, infatuation. It's just, oh, you can do this now. Oh, well, let's, let's have a go. And that's sort of um, the way Blue Monday, a popular record that one, uh, came Harry. about, was uh, getting this box and not reading the manual. And uh, that's how you, you know, don't read the manual, write a song. <laughs> that's my advice to anybody. And here is the result of that advice. New Order and Blue Monday, and I'm here with Stephen from New Order. Hello. Um, was, this, was it a surprise when uh, Quincy Jones said he fancied to have another go at that? And I've always thought Quincy Jones would be interested in us because we, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah it was a complete surprise. Um, well, first of all, we were on his label, I must admit. Yeah. And that in itself was a surprise yeah. because we'd been offered loads of silly deals by American companies and they're all like really big ones and Quincy Jones is someone who is sort of well respected and like a lot of the stuff that he's done and uh, you know, they made us an offer we couldn't refuse you know. and it was it was it why did he sign you to his label um, was it on the strength of that song or did he know more I about think you? He liked us. Yeah. I think he liked us yeah yeah I think he thought we were, we were all right but it's cool, funny cool that sort of, yeah, yeah. Now, I just want to bring back a memory now of reading an interview with him. It is that sort of American thing. Hey, they're wild guys. Yeah, yeah. you know. No, it's, it, it's really good being the only white act yeah. on an all-black label. Yeah, no, yeah. No, it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about was, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of hot air has been talked about, you know, your image and how you kind of were mysterious and all that. But when I was thinking about it, I thought about how... Um, the, the strange thing about it was, was that it was almost like a restraint, you know what I mean? The thing yeah. about <clears throat> when you get in a group is you want to be on the posters, you know, and you really want to be 
But was that a conscious thing to restrain your own kind of, or were you not interested? Well, we never looked very good in photographs, as you've probably seen. That's frank. It's completely frank. We looked rotten, basically, and we thought, you know, most record sleeves or posters, you know, get a picture of the group. Yeah, well, can't have something nice on it instead. We'll have a nice sort of design, and it's not sort of, you know. Every sort of Lou Reed record's got a picture of Lou Reed, you know, if every record of ours had a picture of it, I'm sure people would be cottoned on by now. Um, but there, wasn't, there weren't terrible arguments about people desperate to get their faces all plastered no, all over town. No, in fact, yeah, I was very surprised when I actually got my face on the front of Low Life. Uh, yeah. I, I never thought of myself as being the most photogenic person in the world. But there I am, there I am. But fame itself isn't something that's particularly... Um, no, it's not. Interested? Yeah. Not particularly interested in it. No, no. Um, you get sometimes get recognised pushing the shopping trolley. Well, it's usually to the checkout in Tesco. You're not a bloke out in your yard, aren't you? Yes, I am. And that's it, really. I mean, I'm not really into fame at all. It's a sort of recreation. Not something you'd have as a preference. No. Not for Christmas. No. <laughs> Definitely not. The money, not the fame. No, we had the money. Yeah. I'd take the money. I'd take the money. Yes, but not, you can keep the fame. I can only agree. You can, you can, agree. You, you, know, you could pretend to be me. I'll just take the money, and we can have your picture instead. And what are New Order doing specifically at this moment? Specifically at this moment, while everybody is sort of um, embroiled in the uh, sort of like the menopause, isn't it? You do these solo album things. Uh, Bernard's doing uh, electronic, which should be out next year. Okie's doing, uh, well he has done Revenge and he's touring with them. Um, Gillian and Mary have done some film stuff and they'll probably do a record next year. And uh, New Order themselves get back together in April and start working on a new album. The new tax year. Don't we tax year? <laughs> oh, oh, you had to mention it. Oof. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. It's Steve. a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thanks, thanks for coming to the it's Yeah, it's about you. You can it is a job here place. anytime, yeah. <laughs> Is new on the new order, new under, new under, and touched by the hand of God. Yes, indeed.